We know those strikes are continuing and the costs are mounting. Defense analysts are saying that the Pentagon could be burning through $100 million a day for all of this. This is our share of the cost to Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas, who says why. He's had enough of it. He joins us on the phone. So, Congressman, you would stop this now or what? Yeah, I would have stopped it a long time before it even started. And I even suggested that uh, Obama not do it a couple of weeks ago. I introduced the resolution that said that he shouldn't do it. And he ought to bring it to the Congress and debate it before he does it. But uh, I guess he didn't get my message. Well, I'm wondering, um, the, the fact that the president went along with this, we're told grudging like Congressman, uh, that he too realizes the limitations of this or that the world court of opinion was such that if we didn't get involved, France or the others were going to lead the way, so we had to. What, what do you think? Well, how, you know, that's even worse. If he knows that it wasn't the right thing to do and leaned against it and then was coerced into doing it because he didn't want France to get credit for right. it. Well, that I don't know. To be fair, Connor, that I don't know. I'm just reading uh, it from the well, weekend. Well, anyway. It, but but you don't think foreign aid of any sort is advisable, certainly in this region where we have a habit of picking the wrong... <laughs> the wrong guys, right? Yeah, I think foreign aid ought to be voluntary. When you like a country and they need some help, you can send them a check. But I don't think I should, as a legislator, take money from you and pick and choose the different factions around the world. I'm not, you know, the, look at what they've taken from us, uh, taken from the citizens of the last 40 years and given uh, Mubarak 40, $70 billion. I, I don't think that's wise expenditure, especially what it's led to is this financial crisis and now... What are we doing? We're in this crisis. And they're deciding to spend all this money again. I mean, it uh, it makes no sense at all. And I think the American people are going to wake up a little sooner this time. I think they finally woke up and said we ought to get out of Afghanistan. But here we can't get them out of Afghanistan. Now they're getting ready to put us into Libya. Now, you would argue not too long ago, Congressman, that it's a slippery slope when you decide how and why you get into a country or a conflict. And in this case, to rescue people from uh, just a, a brutal ruler uh, you, you got to do that for all the people in the region who might be feeling uh, similarly, you know, sh shunned. Uh, so Bahrain would come to mind, uh, Yemen would come to mind, yeah. and of course Iran would come to mind, right? Right, and it, it's it's pure hypocrisy, and I think the people see through this. Uh, that if it's a friendly dictator who's doing the harm to their people, we ignore it. But if it's somebody else, and all of a sudden we use that as an excuse. To go in, but there has to be ulterior motives. I don't believe. I don't believe for a minute, and I don't think the American people believe that this is only for humanitarian reasons. You know, I just don't think they're buying into that anymore, because I, they might. They might have noticed that uh, Libya has a little bit of oil over there. In the last five years, you know, the West has put a lot of investments into Libya, and that probably has more, a lot more to do with it than. Uh, humanitarianism. And it has a lot to do with Germany abstaining and not taking part because it has direct economic ties. But to that point, Congressman, Dennis Kucinich, a Democrat from the presidential candidate, went so far as to say these are impeachable uh, grounds to go after the president. What do you make of that? Well, I think they are. Uh, I don't think uh, that's, a, that's going to happen. I, I doubt if you could get five people to do it. But no, I, I think... Uh, I think so many of our presidents uh, ever since World War II have done things they shouldn't have done, and technically they're impeachable because they're unconstitutional. But how many things have the Congress done that are unconstitutional? So it's a whole system that has just rejected the whole notion of the rule of law and ob obeying the Constitution. So I, I think that's a point you can make, but uh, more importantly, what we need to do is wake up the American people, wake up the Congress, and go back to Congress next week have a strong resolution condemning it and, and denying all funds for, uh, you know, any adventurism into Libya. Congressman, I talked to Donald Trump not too long ago, and one of your uh, folks had argued, I think, saying it, it, it wasn't exactly on the up and up for him to send one of his people to Iowa on a corporate jet. Um, in that conversation, Mr. Trump was saying of you that you have no chance ever being president or getting elected. Um, what do you think of that? Well, I, I don't. I, I wouldn't bet I have overwhelming chances, but you know, I've often said, uh, and uh, I said this when I first ran for Congress. You know, it's a little bit risky putting your name on the ballot because ballot, you might get elected. <laughs> so yes, if you put your name down, you might get elected. Right. But you know, I think a, a good answer to that, uh, and this is not an original for me. They said, 
I never believed Obama would ever be our president either. Do you think <laughs> Donald Trump could ever be president? Uh, yeah, I think I think that he uh, it might be is that he he could you know if he he has the money you know when the money talks in this country uh, so. Uh, yeah, he if he puts his name on the ballot and spends all his money, uh, you know who who knows what could happen. Well, you know you you had a way of raising a lot of money, of you know five, ten bucks, twenty bucks at a time. You had a, a great deal of support in this California straw poll. I'm looking at, lo and behold, you're up top of everybody. Um, you gonna run? I don't know. I uh, keep wondering about it. Uh, I don't know whether those polls are exactly. Uh, uh, revealing the real nature <laughs> of what's going on. Well, but who cares? Who cares? I mean, I'd, I'd rather be on top than on bottom in a poll like that. Boy, that's that's for right. sure. You know, but what, how did how did Trump come out on that poll? Oh, oh, very <laughs> touche. Um, Rand Paul, your son, the senator, had indicated that maybe if you weren't interested in running, um, the quote exactly here. The only decision I made is I won't run against my dad. Uh, <laughs> So is this one of the other of you going to run? <laughs> I, I have no idea because I would uh, I'd be surprised if if uh, if he'd be ready to take on another campaign after getting in office for two months. I mean, you were there on the day he was sworn That's in. Right. That doesn't seem so long ago. Well, because uh, I was I, there, be that, that, well, actually, because I was there the day you were sworn in, and talked to both of you the day you were sworn in, I think it only fair that one or the other of you decides to run for president. You announce it and do it on my show rather than, let's say, Sean Hannity. I think that would be a waste of time, right? Well, as long as you promise that you'll call me when you make your decision to run for public office. Oh, you're coming right back fast and furious. All right. Uh, Ron Paul, thank you very, very much. You always answer every single question. Always appreciate it. Right. Right, the congressman, uh, who knows what in the next few weeks, months, year? Hmm.